everybody, Dr. Tom Frazier here, Chief Science Officer for Autism Speaks. Wanted to do a quick video just to give you uh, a little bit more clarity and insight into the recent Center for Disease Control and Prevention, CDC, study on the prevalence of autism in U.S. adults. CDC findings estimate that autism occurs in 1 in 45 or 2.2 percent of U.S. adults. The U.S. does not have a system to monitor adult autism prevalence. So the researchers in this case used a mathematical model or a formula to estimate this number. The formula is based on state data for children ages 3 to 17 and responses to the 2017 National Survey on Children's Health. The model is also adjusted for higher mortality rates among people with autism. Previous CDC estimates focused on children with autism based on medical and school records. So this adult study uses different data to calculate the adult estimate. You might wonder why they also include some data from three to 17 year old children. And the reason is because that's the data that's available that gives us a sense of how people are aging with autism and getting closer to adulthood. So they can use that data along with information about adults to estimate the prevalence of autism in adulthood. What are the key findings of the report? Well, key findings include one in 45 adults in the US is estimated to have autism, or 2.21% of the adult population. The current estimated prevalence for children is one in 54, or 1.85%. Autism prevalence in adults varied by region. The prevalence of autistic adults by state ranged from a low of 1.97% or about 2% in Louisiana to a high of 2.42% in Massachusetts. The states with the greatest estimated number of adults living with ASD included California, which had 700,000 adults estimated with autism, Texas, which had 450,000 adults with autism, New York estimated to have 340,000 adults with autism, and Florida, 330,000 estimated adults with autism. The prevalence is higher in men, 3.6% than women, 0.8%. And this is roughly similar to gender differences we see in child prevalence estimates. Usually we see somewhere around four males for every female with autism. So what do these results mean for the autism community? This report fills a gap in knowledge about how many adults in the U.S. may be affected by autism. With this information, stakeholders, Autism Speaks, our advocacy group are much better equipped to measure the needs for and the effectiveness of programs that support autistic adults and to advocate for needed resources to policymakers, public health agencies, and the research community in general. This information can really also help us and help, help us help states understand the local needs for providing diagnosis, services, and community supports for autistic adults. For the roughly one third of autistic adults with significant support needs, that means that there's about 2 million people in the US, autistic adults, that have significant support needs. This prevalence estimate further highlights the need for resources to support them as they get older and they may no longer have caregivers available. Some of the supports and services that they had earlier in their life that were effective may not be as effective as they get older. We need to understand this group. We need to provide and identify the kinds of services and supports that are gonna help to maximize their functioning and their well-being. Another question we got was, does Autism Speaks help support and advocate for adults on the spectrum? Autism Speaks is working tirelessly to fuel research that would allow earlier diagnosis and intervention, advocacy with and for the autism community to ensure access to care and services throughout the lifespan, and programs and services that support adult transition and allow our constituents to reach their full potential. In 2019, Autism Speaks funded 2.6 million in grants to research into programs and services that support the transition to adulthood. We're proud of that. And we're also proud of the fact that Autism Speaks hosted a thought leadership summit on the transition to adulthood, 
last fall that featured discussions around research needs for employment, education, access to needed services like healthcare, transportation, and housing for teens and adults with autism. So thanks for watching this video. I hope that I was able to give you a little bit of insight into what the CDC has done with their adult prevalence, but also what we're doing at Autism Speaks to try to support adults, whether they're adolescents transitioning to adulthood, young adults, middle age, or even later in the lifespan. Thanks a lot.